All right, so today we are talking about array lists, hash maps, and accumulator patterns. Cool. So here's our overview. We're going to talk about array lists first, hash maps, and then finally accumulator patterns. So what are array lists? The array list class is a resizable array which can be found in the java.util package. The difference between a built-in array and an array list in Java is that the size of the array cannot be modified. Uh, I don't know if you guys have looked into this yet, but you literally have to specify the size of the array as you're declaring it. So an array list um, gets rid of this. It allows you to add however many um, pieces of information you need in addition to removing um, pieces of information you don't need as well. So if we were going to import and use this, this would be like above our class. This would not actually be in our class. So we import this and then down below we now have access to this class. And so we can say we want an array list of strings. You still have to declare the data type that is going to be in your array list. We're going to call it cars. And then we call the constructor for array list and we create a new array list uh, with type string. And then this is just calling the function. So that's a new instance of that class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, um, as far as I could find in my research, array lists still need a type declaration. Um, the difference is hash maps because those are more like arrays, uh, pardon me, JavaScript objects. So you have like keys and values. So you can specify the value of the key to be like a string. And you can specify the value of the val value uh, the keys value to be like an integer. So you can have differentiation there, but here in the array list, as far as I can find, if somebody wants to correct me, uh, you still need to declare the one single type it's going to hold. So let's go on to the next part. So this is what I was talking about. Um, this is how you would normally initialize a Java, just vanilla array. And so you can see we are declaring an array of integers, and then right here we're declaring the size. So no matter what, this will always be 10 units long. And then in order to initialize it, you can do this in a for loop as well, but just to show you the painfulness of this, uh, we have that you need to go into the zero spot, that's 100, 1, uh, 200, blah, 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 and uh, that doesn't look like fun, right? They're very rigid and confined, and like I said, they must be declared with the exact number of indices. Arrays must be then initialized with a loop, and array lists fix these problems. So how are they different? They're an extension of this class. And so when I am saying this, I am talking about on the documentation, the Java language object is the master parent class. But then nested inside of that, we have the abstract collection class. And then finally, the abstract list class, which is actually what helps us create an array list. So array list is actually a subclass of abstract list. And this is off the documentation. You can view this yourself. So Right here in the docs, you can see the nested structure of how this array list comes about when we import it. And I'll show you some examples uh, later, too. So hash maps, like I said, they're much more similar to like JavaScript objects. Uh, they're also an extension of the Java Util class, and they do not guarantee consistent ordering. So if you're trying to loop through using the integer keys, and you're trying to count you know, from 0 to 100, they do not guarantee consistent ordering. So keep that in mind, that if you insert things in one way, they may end up in a different way. So maybe having integers as keys is not the best idea if you're planning on looping through it. Maybe strings would be better, or nested objects, ne uh, pardon me, nested hash maps. So again, uh, they store in items in key value pairs, and you can access these by an index of another type. So. For this example, we have one data type which is used as a key, which is our index, to access another data type as the value. It can store different types such as string keys and integer values or the same types such as string keys and string values. And so I wanted to showcase here there's actually a different way you can declare a hash map. So normally we have to import it at the top, right? And then we can actually call it vanilla right here. And we say we want a string key with string values. This New hash map is going to be called capital cities, and then we call the constructor, we pass in the data types, and then this function right here is what actually creates the instance of a hash map. 
Down here, you don't necessarily need to import it. Obviously, this is going to get really annoying and frustrating, but you can literally just type in java.util hashmap and that gives you access to it as well. Um, the only thing that importing it at the top does makes it so you can just literally just call hashmap. Um, it's up to you, whatever you want to do. I just wanted to show that you could do that. They're different because they're uh, an extension of the abstract map class. So you can see up here, they're still stemming from that parent uh, object, but we're not going into the, uh, I think it was collections, abstract collections. We're going into abstract map. And then we're finally creating hash map off of that parent abstract map class. So this is a subclass of ab abstract map. Um, I'm gonna dish out these slides to you guys. I have a whole bunch of links. Um, I don't want to click on this one right now. Like I said, I could just send them out to you. Um, this is literally just the, the documentation on abstract map. So accumulator patterns. Um, I just quickly threw this together. Uh, REPL has Java. I don't know if you guys knew that. I didn't. And when I loaded it up and I saw it, I was like, what? Um, and it works pretty great. Uh, the coloring is pretty rough, right? Like almost nothing except for like the modifiers are colorized. But uh, I was able to write this in. REPL and worked just fine, ran. So what I'm doing, we're all probably um, pretty familiar with this, is I'm initializing my array list, and the way you do that is I'm using a for loop, I'm using dot add i, so obviously i is zero, and then I add zero, blah, 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 up to nine, because then when it hits 10, it's no longer less than 10, it's equal to 10, so we'll get zero to nine, but, in order to actually log it out, uh, I created another function. And so this is going to be just logging out every single indice inside of this array. So we're all familiar with the accumulator pattern in JavaScript. It's just uh, exactly the same thing. The only difference is it's int to declare your iterator, um, not uh, let, right? You have to also call dot size on array lists. This is a method that's available in the documentation. Um, it's just like W3, right? Like when you were going to W3 to look at string methods, um, the Oracle documentation also has really good docu uh, documentation on the methods that you can use on, on these specific types. So since I know I'm on an array list, I can go to the documentation and look up an array list and the docs, and then I, I can see a, a full table of all of the methods that are available to me. So that's how I knew to use .get. I actually just looked at the documentation. So I have a working example. And I can Slack this out to you guys if you want to take a look. Oh, I turned off Slack. Hmm. Okay, well, it's REPL.IT slash at capital B APH 57 slash capital, uh, capital U unwilling capital O only capital M mouse. If you wanted to come and see what I just did, let's pump this up. And like I said, we get zero through nine, right? So that's our accumulator pattern. But why was I talking about parent classes? Well, parent classes are actually, um, you can use a parent class to create a subclass. So up here, you may have noticed I also imported abstract list because that's the parent class of array list. And so using abstract list right here in my main function, my main method, um, I use right here, I declare this test list to run my, um, to run my, what's it called? Abstract list generator. So these are all the generators that just ran this function that we're seeing the output of. This is what I just showed you in that slide. I'm gonna show you guys why the parent classes matter now. So let's get rid of that, get rid of that. So here are my other generating functions. Let's slide this over so that doesn't look weird. There we go. So what I did is instead of having a list generator that is a ray list type, let's minimize that again. I, I created a function that is an abstract list type, okay? So up here, I'm setting this abstract list to a variable called test list, and that is going to be equal to my abstract list generator. And that's what this returns. It returns an abstract list. Okay. Next, I do array list, new list. This is a new variable, and I use casting. This is called Java, 
Java, I almost said JavaScript, Java casting. Since abstract list is a parent of array list, I can declare array list here with the variable name and set it equal to a, an array list type while still calling the abstract list generator. And now what I'm able to do down here is I can take in an array list. You see that? So I generate an abstract list, I cast it to another variable as an array list, and then I'm able to take in an array list and I'm able to do the same thing I just showed you using the parent class. And here's where the error shows, right? Everything's broken. No. Nope. Same thing. I'm not, as a matter of fact, I don't need this. Well, okay, it's looking at all these. Let's get rid of those. All right, you know what? I'm not going to mess around with this, but you can create new instances. I think it's because I'm casting down here. I think what I should have done, uh, not up here. Up here I'm casting. I think that was referencing up here. What I should be doing is I should be calling the constructor for the new uh, for the array list. Since I'm not calling a constructor for a new array list, I think this was just grabbing my import up here. So it is possible to just do this without um, without importing the array list. Um, but then you would need to call the constructor on array list from the parent class, which I didn't do. So that's why that's erroring out. But it is possible. So to come back here. Uh, it's full. S what is going on? There we go. Okay. So that was a working example. If you want to take a look, I'll slack out these slides. Like I said, um, I also have examples of how to loop through array lists as well as hash maps. And as w uh, I also have like, what is a list at its core? So lists and maps are actually um, computer science topics. They're data structures. So um, lists, we've all heard of that. That's a singly linked list. That's the like base data structure that we are going to be dealing with technically. I mean, we're using array lists, but they stem from that relationship all the way to up to the top of the Java language object. So lists are actually a computer science data structure. The same thing with maps. Uh, when, I, when I looked up maps, it redirected me to associative arrays, but it said that they're exactly the same thing. So it's another uh, data type. Am I repeating what I already wrote here? Yeah, so we have a da 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 da, -da supply to file libraries, awesome. Yeah, so in computer science, a dynamic array, a growable array, a resizable array, a dynamic table, not any associative arrays, mutable array or array list is a random access variable size list data structure. So lists are a data structure. Hash tables or hash maps are also a data structure and they implement associative array abstract data types, which is a structure that can map keys to values. I didn't understand that, but I can read English. And um, that's all I got for you guys. That's uh, what John wanted me to present on. What are array lists, hash maps, and accumulator patterns? Are there any questions? Hash maps are essentially like if you would want to um, if you would want to store something as a, let me go back to that presentation, right here. So the way you would reference a hash map is you would have to pass in the actual left side value that equivalates to a key within that hash map. Um, referencing it, why you um, Because it's very similar to a JavaScript object. So it's what we're familiar with and it's what we know. Um, this is just like Java's way of creating the JavaScript objects we're familiar with. Um, it still has those caveats, like I said, where there does need to be two strictly defined data types for the key and the value pairs. But other than that, for all intents and purposes, there's keys and there's values. And they're stored very much like an object in JavaScript, and you can access them in very similar ways. And so, actually, let's go to, well, let's go to abstract map. So abstract map is the parent. And now if I wanted to look at what this parent can create down here, direct known subclasses, linked hash map. That's not the same thing. I might have linked the wrong one. Oh, no, it's right here, hash map. I linked the wrong one. Pardon me. 
So this is the hash map. It, it, uh, it's an extension of abstract map from object. And if we come down, like I said, so this is on uh, docs.oracle.com, we have the constructor, talks about how the constructor uh, works, what you need to pass in, and then right here, like I said, it shows you all of the methods that are available to you. So right here, get object key, right? So if you if you call, like, um, where did I, let's see, let's just show it right here. Like here, dot get, right? I just pass it in into the parentheses, it's the same thing with the hash map. Oh, that's, right? Get, and then you pass in the object of key. Returns to the value with the specified key is mapped or null if this map contains no mapping for the key. I think the reason it says object is that it's trying to show you that it could be multiple data types. I don't think that you need to pass an object into here, which I, I'm not sure that data structure exists in Java. Anyway, I don't think there are like objects as we think of them in JavaScript. What we have is hash maps. Uh, any other questions? I think it's stemming from that um, low level list data structure and then they build on top of that. So let's go, um, let's exit and let's go to that documentation. Well, it's probably in here somewhere. Where's the docs? I think this is the wrong one. Oh, no. Um, one more time, what was your question? I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, yes. Yeah, um, I think that it's a different data structure entirely. Um, right here, it's it, um, if we want to create an array list, we have to use the abstract list, which stems from abstract collection. So I think at its core, let's let's look at a list. So um, the list is responsible for creating all these lists. That makes sense. Uh, vectors are three-dimensional points in space. Uh, stack. Maybe that's like the actual call stack. Um, but down here, clear, add. I, I think it's very, very similar to like a singly linked list. I wouldn't necessarily say it's creating copies of arrays. Yeah. I think it's probably holding um, some property or method inside its like constructor where if you pass in, um, like if I did, oh, well, let's go back. If I did dot get, like right here, there's probably something going on under the hood that's like traversing multiple um, variables and, or something like that. But I think this is actually more like a singly linked list than a typical array in JavaScript. Because I think in JavaScript arrays, oh, what is it? They're weird. They're really weird in JavaScript. They're like technically objects or something or technically strings or it might be the other way around. But yeah. And low-level computer science, lists are what you're going to be dealing with. As a matter of fact, I have uh, C-sharp projects where I'm using lists and uh, I'm not using arrays or anything. Um, have I used Python? Yeah, I could probably stop the recording and look that up. I have not dealt with a ton of Python. I could probably look at it and understand some of the syntax. I did like a little bit of the Code Academy thing, but I don't have like a ton of experience with that. Um, yeah. Num.py is like a library, right? Okay, yeah. So it's probably like the one in the library is a constructor and it's creating some sort of like class that, uh, your Python scripts can call. That would be my guess. I think that the list, since it's the primitive type, that's probably what it's probably what what's Python is meant to do, you know. And then with the library, it's gonna have have like a ton more functionality that maybe creates something that looks like an array, 
but isn't actually an array, you know? Um, that would be my guess. Are there any other questions before I stop the recording? Again, I'll, I'll send these slides out to you guys because I, I linked a ton of stuff, um, especially this last slide. I have that working example that links to my REPL. I have two different, um, so like here this is Sergly, and this one is Beginner's Book, two different websites that show you how to loop through. I have um, what are lists, Wikipedia, so this takes you to the Wikipedia article on lists talking about computer science data structures, and then this one links to associative arrays, which are the low-level data structure maps, essentially. Cool? Questions? Comments, concerns? I would imagine if you, we could maybe try that right now. Um, okay, so let's, I'm actually just going to go back to this. I'll pump this up. Oh, that's right, you can't, okay, never mind. I'm going back to REPL. Okay, so let's return to commenting these out. I guess it is possible. What I would need to do uh, da, 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 add should be fine. I oh no, I would need to add. Okay, so let's do this. This will generate all of the lists, and then I'll have a double down list generator. I do think it's possible. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, array list, so we're taking in an array list. Um, we're taking in an array list of, uh, array list, oh, list. Um, let's change this. Uh, R, R. I don't think there would be any errors, but just to keep everything different. And then um, and then we could probably call the same method. So let's try this. Up here, comment this out. So I generate the list with a list. Oh, I need to change the name. Um, B list generator. Let me just run this. Let's see what happens. Let's see if there's any errors. I forgot any semicolons. Error identifier expectified. Uh, expectified. <laughs> um, B list. So it didn't throw any errors when I was um, reached the end of the file when parsing. What did I do wrong? On line 36. Oh, did I comment out that I did? Oh, now it's starting to point at it. Oh, because oh, geez. I probably shouldn't be recording this. It's probably going to be embarrassing in retrospect, but. You guys are free to go. No, you're good. Yeah, like this is the end of the presentation, so I'm just like, I'm just, I just want to figure this out myself. Uh, error incompatible types. That's right. Uh, I don't think so, because that's like the whole reason you would use it. I'm not, um, uh, 
object cannot be converted to a ring list. It works here. Add array list. It's going to return an array list. We're taking an array list. Array list to array list. Add. That's what I that's what I put, but then it, it said that B list is not a function that operates on an integer. The problem is what I'm trying to do is get nested arrays. So if I just put in well I guess okay. Yeah, okay, I see what you're saying now. Hey, Okay, so we've generated, we got rid of the errors. Um, now if we create a new array list to show stuff, oh, stuff equals B, B list generator, right? Yeah, B list generator, and then we can call that uh, A list display on to, to show stuff. Uh, ah, yes, thank you. Welcome to the world of semicolons. Yes. Locked. All right, that's a great place to end that. I'm a 